Hi, I'm Brad Kamarmi. I'm an engineer here at Max Pro Technologies, and I'm standing next to a unit we have built. Um, it's a three station cycle tester. It's designed to cycle at a hydraulic crimp, which you can see there on the right. Each chamber has a dedicated uh, touchscreen for controls and some manual valves underneath it. Um, it's set up as a redundant system, so each three each of the three test chambers has its dedicated pump, vent valves, um, and human machine interface. Okay, so here we've opened the chamber and we've loaded the crimper in the uh, bulkhead at the bottom of the chamber. We're getting ready to start the test. We have a few manual controls here. Now these are not needed for cycling applications, um, but they will be, need to be in the right position. Um, the first one is the air shutoff. You obviously want this in the open position uh, for operation. If you didn't want to operate this, you could close that. The regulating vent. This is used to slow the rate of depressurization during the cycle. If this is fully closed, you won't be able to complete your cycle. So you need to ensure that this is somewhat in the open position. The next valve is the manual vent. This valve should never need to be used during normal operations. It's provided simply as a contingency. Um, if for some unforeseen circumstance you weren't able to vent, you could always vent with this valve here. So during normal operation, you want to make sure this is in the closed position. The next valve over is a gauge isolation. And what this isolates is the system pressure gauge here. You don't want that gauge to be cycling up and down every cycle, but there could be a scenario where you want to know if you have pressure in the system um, or if you think your transducer needs calibrated. So we're going to go ahead and close this valve. Okay, so when we close the chamber door, for operation you have to engage the manual lock. You can see here an indicator that the door is open until you engage the, the manual latch and now you're ready for operation. Okay, once we enter the recipe set screen, you'll see there's some different windows. The first one is the final pressure. That's the high pressure point you want the unit to cycle to. Below that, we have the pressure, pressurized failure timer. What this means is if something should go wrong in the part, this is the amount of time the system will try to build pressure before shutting down the test. You have a high pressure dwell, which is how long you want to hold that high pressure, and the high pressure failure trigger. What this will indicate is, is once you reach the, reach the high point, it'll allow you to drop 30 PSI before canceling the test. And then we have a low pressure dwell, or in other words, how long it's going to remain vented, and then the cycle count. Each one of these fields are enterable just by simply pressing on the field. Brings up the keypad and you can enter the numbers. Now you're back to the main screen. We've entered our test parameters on the recipe screen and returned to the home page. On the home page, you have four buttons a start, stop, reset, and the data logger. The data logger button should be lit up if you want to record the data. So if we were to start a test right now, we would simply be cycling and not recording data. When we push the button, you'll see the blue light come on, and that indicates that we're going to, we're going to record the information for the test. Uh, you have real-time pressure, peak pressure, and cycles remaining. I have it set for 9,999 cycles, and we'll press start to begin. You can see the hydraulic crimp beginning to close. Once it closes, the system will take it up to the set point we had of 8,000, and then vent, hold for one second, and then take it back up to 8,000. So now the system will continue to run until it completes all the cycles or it reaches some type of failure condition, meaning either the part has failed and you're una unable to build pressure or the door, someone tries to open the door during the test. You can see when I open the manual latch, the test will stop. When I re-engage the latch, you're able to start again simply by pressing the start button.
This would also be the scenario if you had a low oil condition. Um, it would alarm you, let you know that you're running low on oil and stop the test. There's a couple other icons down here that you can do different things with the system. The first one is a trend screen. So basically, as the unit's cycling, we're recording the real-time pressure, and the operator is able to scroll backward or forward. So in the event that the unit started to fail, say it was leaking but it was still making pressure, you can zoom back for up to an hour and determine what time it started to fail, and you can correlate to the data to then see at what cycle it started to fail. I've now stopped the unit to go over the manual screen. Basically what this screen allows you to do is operate the system completely manual through the touch screen. You have an icon for the pressure regulator, the pump, and the vent valve, and it shows real-time pressure there. So turn on the manual mode button. Okay, in the manual controls, you can basically operate the system um, manually without using the PLC for the controls. There's a manual mode button, which you can turn on or off in the blue light. So we're going to turn it on. The blue light comes on. And you have your air pressure. This is the air pressure you're feeding to the pump, the vent valve, and the real-time pressure. When either the pump or the vent valve are illuminated green like that, that means they're active. So in this point right now, the vent valve is open. So I'm going to close the vent valve, click on the air pressure, and I'm going to set it at 40 PSI. So that's going to give 40 pounds of air to the pump. And when I hit the pump button, it'll begin to run with 40 pounds of pressure behind it. What the two blue toggles here allow you to do is increment the air pressure up one PSI at a time. So as I toggle this up, you can see the pressure is increasing there. So in this manner, you're allowed to just dial the system into a very fine set point. Um, when you're satisfied with the pressure, de-illuminate the pump and illuminate the vent valve and it'll vent. The last button we haven't touched on is the settings page. This is used mainly for maintenance purposes. You can manipulate the pump ratio and calibrate the transducer from this screen. Okay, I've opened the doors on the front of the cabinet so you can see what's powering these cyclic tests. Um, you can see we have three Maximator L150 pumps. Each one ties to its own dedicated test chamber. This was done for redundancy. So one unit can be being repaired while the other units are in operation. On the back of the cabinet, you can see we have the three air valves, each one again tied to an individual test chamber. Um, occasionally these will need rebuilt. Um, and this allows you to still function on the other chambers while you're, you're maintenancing the valve. This unit is designed to take a hydraulic crimper and cycle it to the point of failure while digitally recording the, the data and the results. Um, it's a pretty custom solution, but we'd be happy to talk to you about your application and design a system fit to your needs.